This video serves as an introduction to using Excel or Google Sheets for making charts and fitting lines. This shows an empty spreadsheet like you would arrive at after opening a new spreadsheet, in this case using the Google Sheets program. We can go ahead and paste in the data that we have from eClass. This will give us our mass values and our extension values. And one of the first things we can do is actually tell the program what those are by saying insert a row above, grabbing this little header bar down, and typing in column headings. So this will allow us to use this information. Uh, extension. OK, so given these two pieces of information, we can go ahead and navigate around the formula. We need to transform these values into uh, different values using unit conversions. For example, the table uh, for your submission wants mass in kilograms. And we can do this by entering Excel uh, or Google Sheets formulas. And formulas rely on the idea that a spreadsheet has a coordinate system given by the column headings here, shown as letters A, B, C, and D, and here in the row headings shown as numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So to refer to a specific cell, we just refer to it by its coordinates. And so if I want to take the entry here in cell A2, I can transform that into the mass of an object in kilograms using a formula. And you always start formulas with an equal sign, and then enter in the coordinate of the cell you want to manipulate, in this case A2. And then we want to divide that number by 1,000 to turn it into kilograms. And we use the slash uh, symbol here for division. So that allows us to just directly turn this into kilograms. Now, I could be lame and go ahead and type A3 of, over 1,000 here and keep entering all these values on down. But spreadsheets are smarter than that. They know that if you have a value in one entry in a column, then the entries below are going to refer to the same uh, formula applied to just using a different entry in the row. So if I go ahead and I copy the formula here and then paste it through this range of cells, what it will do is it will propagate and change the column and row entry for the cell used in the formula and carry that on down. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you want to refer to a specific cell. So let's say we want this cell to be equal to A2 divided by 1,000, but we also want this cell to be referring to A2 divided by 1,000. If we pasted it on down, it would match and refer to A3. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to put dollar signs in front of the column and or the row. And what that will do is it will lock the reference in place. And if I copy and paste that on down, I get the same formula every time. So we don't really need that information. But what we do need to do is to transform the force uh, here into uh, from kilograms into newtons. So if we use the for or the we'll call it the weight in newtons, we're going to take the mass in kilograms and multiply that using an asterisk times 9.81. And if we paste that on down, we have the weight in newtons, and we can get the extension in meters by taking the value here in the extension in centimeters and dividing that by 100. Again, copy and paste it on down, propagating the formula all the way on down. Uh, the math functions that you'll need to know are uh, slash for division, asterisk for multiplication. You can exponentiate uh, by taking a number and using the caret uh, symbol. So that will square the value in entry A2. And then plus and minus are going to be uh, just a plus sign or a minus sign, respectively. The next thing we need to worry about is how to insert a chart. Uh, to do this, we want to look at the extension and the weight here and make a chart of these two uh, quantities uh, with the extension on the x-axis and the weight on the y-axis. 
So I'm going to go ahead and select these two values, go up to the insert and chart uh, formula, and this will bring the chart into the spreadsheet. You can click and drag it around. This isn't the kind of chart that we want, so we head over to this sidebar and we go ahead and we want to select a scatter chart, which is down at the bottom of the entry. So if we select a scatter chart, this will give us our X and our Y values. And what we need to do is tell it which data to use for uh, what value. So we want as an X axis, we want the extension. And then as a Y value, we want the weight. So we can go ahead and remove extension versus extension. And this will give us the graph that we want. We have weight and extension plotted against each other. The Y value is the weight, the X value is the extension. But it would be really good to go ahead and know that. So we can go into the custom and start customizing things like the chart title and axes. We can just call this in our chart title, weight versus extension. And then if I want to change the axes titles, I can go ahead here and navigate through. I want the horizontal axes to call extension here in meters. Remember to always include units. And in the vertical axis, I can call this weight in newtons. And if I do that, I get the graph that I am looking for here. The next thing that we want to do is to fit a line to our relationship. If we go ahead and do this, we're going to use the linest function. So to activate linest, we type equals because we're starting a formula. Then we type in linest, L-I-N-E-S-T, open bracket. And then we want to give the coordinates of the ranges we want to use for the fitting. In this case, the Y value comes first and the range in the Y value is going to be from D2 down here to D8. So I'm going to go ahead and type in D2 out to D8. And that gives me my Y range here. You know the colon uh, indicates a range, so from D2 to D8, and it highlights that range in the spreadsheet. Then I type in the X range that I want. In this case, it's going to run from E2 down to E8. So I type E2 to E8, and that gives me the range that I want to use there. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit the bracket and that's going to give me the slope, so 42.078 newtons per meter, and the intercept, which is going to be minus 0 0.47 uh, newtons. And so that's all good, but we don't have any uncertainties in our values. To get those uncertainties, we need to go back into our linest formula and add in two statements, true, comma, true. And you just type tr comma true, comma true, and that'll give us the full set of information about Linus. The first true says to keep fitting the y-intercept of the relationship, and then the second true says give me all the information. Uh, then what's below this, uh, the uh, slope and the intercept respectively, are the errors in the slope and the error in the intercept. So in this case, I'm going to get the slope is going to be equal to 42 uh, plus or minus 3. So notice that the error here in the slope is 2.8. One significant digit on that is 3. And I'm going to round my slope to the same number of significant digits as are in the error. So 42 plus or minus 3 is the slope. And then the intercept in this relationship will be minus 0 0.47 plus or minus 0 0.08. So the 0 0.8 is going to be one significant digit. And then I round the 0.47 to the same number of significant digits. So the correct answer for the intercept is going to be 0 0.5 plus or minus uh, 0 0.8. The last thing that I want to do is to add a trend line to my graph. So if I double click on my graph, that'll open up the sidebar here with more information about it. And if I select the series entry and scroll down, I find a button that's labeled trend line. And so if I plot the trend line, I get several options around it. We want a linear fit, so that's already set to the default, and some information about it. And then we can go ahead and put that line straight on the data. 
if you actually go ahead and say use equation for the label that puts a legend here and it shows that we get a line that has the same slope 42.07 or 42.1 and trend line minus 0.471 as what we're using in our equation. So we should always include that trend line when we do a fit just to see how it goes through our data.